All right, so let's check out some of these exercises in chapter two on the balance sheet. So we're gonna look at exercise 2-4, 2-5, 2-6, 2-7, 2-10, 2-11, and 214. Okay, so here we go. So on 2-4, let me get my little annotation arrow going here. So it says we have the following events occurred. We got A through E, and they want us to record these transactions and how they would affect, uh, you got the accounting equation, whether it's gonna e increase or decrease. All right. So again, we'll just kind of take these one at a time. So notice again on the first one, we've got received cash from the owners and issued stock to them. So we're gonna increase an asset, which is cash, and then increase equity, which is you're gonna be under your common stock. So this is gonna be that investment category. <clears throat> Remember the other categories that affect equity would be revenues, expenses, and a dividend. And under those, we would be putting those under retained earnings. So for now, common stock gets the investment. All right, so next one on five, we've got borrowed cash from a bank signed a note. So we're gonna increase cash, which is an asset and increase your liability by 8,000. All righty, next one, letter C. We've got bought and received 900 bucks equipment on account. So equipment's an asset. So we increase your asset by 900 and on account means accounts payable. So increase your liabilities also by 900. All right, next one. <clears throat> Purchase land, 14.5 is our cost. We paid 2,500 in cash and then signed a long-term note for 12. So we got two assets affected and one liability. So land is an asset, increases by 14.5. Cash is another asset, decreases by 2,500. And then the balance goes to notes payable of that 12,000. Notice you're still in balance on letter D. All right, letter E <clears throat> says purchased equipment, 4250, paid 1750 in cash and the rest is on account. So notice we'll have equipment increase. There's your 4250, cash decreases by 1750. And then the difference, which is 2500, that's gonna make the equation balance. That's gonna go into your liability account. All right, I think that's two, four. All right, two dash <clears> five. <throat> on two dash five, let me go back, I went ahead. Um, what we've got, oh man, all right, so we've got five events, and in this one we want the journal entry, so we're going to be looking at the debit and credit. So notice again on the first one, receive cash, that's an increase to cash, so we're going to be debiting cash, which is an asset by 15000 and the credit offset goes to fifteen. So you can see how it's the same amounts, um, the debits equal the credits, but notice how they write the debits first, and then they indent, and then write the credits. Second one, again, borrowed money from the bank, signed a note, <clears throat> so increase cash, asset debit cash, eight, and then credit or increase your notes payable, which is a liability by 8,000. All right, next one. We've got bought some equipment on account, so you get a debit equipment, that's an asset, increase your asset by 900, and increase accounts payable by 900. All right, next one, we've got purchased land for 14.5, <clears throat> paid cash 2,500, signed long-term note 12. So again, land and cash are both assets. And so land's gonna be debited, that's gonna be your only debit, that's your cost, increase that. Asset, which is cash, gets credited, it's decreasing by 2,500. And then of course, credit the note payable for 12,000. Notice the two credits equal your total debits. All right, letter E, <clears throat> we've got bought equipment, paid 1750 in cash, charge rest on account. Again, notice debit equipment, you're increasing it by 4250, that's your only debit. The two credits go to cash, you're decreasing it, so that's a credit, and then you're increasing a liability, so you credit that as well. Notice again, your debits equal your credits. All right, so I think that's it on 2.5. Let's check out 2.6 more practice <clears throat> and we'll be looking at how this affects the accounting equation <clears throat> what's being increased and what's being decreased and so forth all right so on two six again we've got purchased equipment for 325 and looks like we paid a 15 dollar uh, long-term note and filling the rest with cash so notice we're increasing equipment decreasing cash and the balance goes to notes payable. So 
the net effect here is, is you, you shifted your assets by a plus 15, and then you increase your liabilities by also by 15. Next one, we've got a issued additional common stock, $27. So we're gonna increase cash and then increase capital. And then it looks like on the last one, we've got they sold their own stock to other investors. Uh, this one is just an exchange between shareholders. It has nothing to do with the individual company. So notice letter C, this is gonna be no transactions actually affected the company. And then in the end, they're showing you again that your total assets equals your total liabilities and your total equity. All right, two seven. We're gonna be looking at more journal entries, debits and credits, we've got three of them. The first one again, it looks like you bought some equipment. Some of it you paid cash, and the other one you paid on account. Again, you would be debiting the equipment. That's an increase, crediting cash, and crediting notes payable. On the next one, again, the same like the previous problem, we issued more stocks, so we're gonna increase or debit cash, and then increase or credit common stock. All right, last one on here, it looks like we've got, again, this was the no transaction, so you just say simply no entry. All right, that's 2.7, let's look at 2.10. We're gonna identify specific accounts, do some journal entries, and then talk about the total assets. So again, first one to start job, there's no entry, they just simply place the order. Uh, nothing is, is actually transacted yet, so this one is no entry. On part B, we bought some equipment. Notice we've got an increase in, in equipment and a decrease in cash and the balance goes to the note payable. And notice how we've got one debit, debit to the equipment, that's the increase, a credit to cash and a credit to your notes payable. On the next one, we've got, looks like an increase to cash and a notes payable because we're borrowing some money. So we're gonna debit cash and credit your note payable. All right, next one. It says hired a new finance manager on the last day of the month. Again, that is no transaction. And then the next one we have got, <clears throat> we got an investment of 12.5 from the company's owners for, for uh, issuing new more shares of stock. So we're gonna be increasing cash and common stock. So debit cash and credit common stock. Next one, you order some supplies along with the bill for 3,500. So that's just gonna be an increase to supplies and an increase to your accounts payable because you haven't paid it yet. So debit supplies, credit accounts payable. Basically you're buying supplies on account. All right, I think the last one on here says we've got, <coughs> once you add all these up, you've got all your assets, your liabilities and your equity amount. It looks like your ending assets should have been right at 431,000 based on these totals. Be the beginning assets were 360, the net change, if all the changes that happened, we increased by 71. So the ending balance would have been 431. All right, that's two, 210, 211. More practice, more repetition on some entries, journal entries, debits and credits, and how they affect our equation. So again, we've got receive cash from investors. So this is gonna be another investment. So you're increasing cash, increasing common stock. So that would be a debit to cash and a credit to common stock. And then, so here's your journal. And then here's, they're showing if you posted this to your ledger, you'd have 65,000 going into your cash account as a debit and a common stock would be increasing by 65,000. All right, next one, borrowed cash from the bank. So we're increasing cash, increasing your note payable. So it's a debit to cash and a credit to notes payable. And then if you post them to your ledger, there's the debit posting to cash and the credit posting to your notes payable. All right, next slide. Order equipment costing 15,000. Nothing's actually happened yet. So on this one, there's no entry. 
And then finally, on this one, you actually purchased it. So on this one, you are going to be increasing the equipment. Uh, that's the total cost. You paid 2,000 in cash and you're gonna owe 12,000. So debit equipment, credit cash, credit notes payable. And then you can see how they would get posted, how they would get posted into your ledger, which is gonna summarize your journal. All right, I think there's one more on here. Again, on letter E, it says you received equipment ordered and paid for half of it and put the rest on account. So the total cost was 15,000. You paid 7,500 in cash, decreased cash. The rest you owe in accounts payable. So you debit equipment, credit cash, credit accounts payable, there's your journal. And then you would summarize those and by posting those into your ledger, that's how it would go. All right, and then here is just showing you the net effect of all your postings. Notice your cash, which is an asset, has a debit balance. Equipment has a debit balance. And then of course, your liabilities have credit balance. All of them have a credit balance and then common stock has a credit balance as well. All right, and then on this one where it says prepare a classified balance sheet, include retained earnings with a balance of zero. So remember your classifications, you've got current, which is your cash, and then you've got equipment, which is non-current. And then of course, current liabilities is anything paid within a year, again, short term. So you got two of them, accounts payable, notes payable, and then you got one long-term note payable, and there's your total payable, total liabilities, total capital, and then notice you are balanced out on your balance sheet. All right, 214. So on this one, they give us uh, some side-by-side -side comparisons of your financials. You'll notice we've got year two, year one, and we're just basically side-by-side -side comparing our asset categories and our balance sheet. They want us to do a current ratio on this one and then figure out uh, are the company's total assets financed primarily, primarily by liability or equity. So is it gonna be debt financing or equity financing? All right, so remember on your current ratio, you take current assets divided by current liabilities. They did this for both year two and year one. So you just go and find your current assets for each of them. And then here's your current uh, liabilities for each of them right there. They go in the denominator and they get 4.15 and 4.63. Looks like in this case, uh, from year one to year two, the current ratio actually went down. Although 4.63 and 4.15, that's still pretty healthy looking current ratio. And I think the numbers kind of got jumbled here in this case, I think. But again, they are, again, doing their current, oh, it says what would they have been if, on March 2nd if they were have paid it down by 8,500. So again, they just would have reduced it. They would have reduced it by 8,500 and you can see how that would have affected uh, your current ratio. Again, this was the last part. They're saying if you had just uh, paid it down, how is that gonna influence your current ratio? All right. And then I think one more, and then they're just, uh, and this, they're just kind of splitting out what makes up their debt. They've got 129,000 of liabilities and equities 410. They're basically saying how much is financed by equity is 410,000 and how much is by debt is 129,000. All right, guys, I think that's the last problem on some of these illustrations in chapter two.